What's going on everybody? Hope you're doing well. My name is Lamont. I've been a full-time trader for seven years now, part of the Chart Guys team for more than half of that, where I head up our futures room and our swing report. In this video, we'll go over the overall market, cover some hype sectors, which honestly aren't really seeing that much hype right now, and uh, hit you with some trade zones, update you on some old trade zones, and also go over how you can get the most asymmetry out of your trades, essentially taking a bigger picture setups on the lower time frame to again give you you know a lot of asymmetry in your trade so that you can size up and be you know you essentially increase your reward a lot while keeping your risk um, low. So without further ado, let's get into it. All right, so we'll start off with spy here. Oops. Okay, so for spy we had the um, I think it was what well, was the end of the quarter right? Yeah, we had the end of the quarter, end of the month. Uh, technically, I guess, end of the week. So very high volume day. And this was a pop and drop situation, a break of the all time high that did not see follow through a uh, bit of a red flag. And so whenever you see this kind of a deal, like, you know, I, and, and I think we may have mentioned this in the, in the in the past, but I forget. Either way, the idea is when you have a situation where you've already been extended for quite some time, buyers have been in control for a while, and then you get a pop and drop, a higher high that lacks follow through, you know, that increases the odds of further daily balance. So that's pretty much what we're looking at right now, as long as we pretty much here, right? For example, you see this pop and drop, right? And so what does that mean? That just means that there's not yet enough demand, right? For buyers to continue to press into all time highs. So whenever you see that pop and drop, then it becomes a matter of, as soon as you see a break that doesn't see follow through, okay, it becomes a matter of looking at the references that were the problems on the way up, now on the way down. Right? Because in order for these sellers to threaten further daily balance, they have to break back under this high volume area. They have to break down under this high volume area, which they did. Um, ended up uh, the low of the day being made again off of the key level of this structure here, this local demand from 612 to 614. You can see how the low of this session and this session and this session and the low of this session all made off of the point of control or the value area high of this structure. It's obviously the key structure. The market is telling us how meaningful this area is. So that's what we're looking out for again. So pretty much the same thing that we were looking out for here, right? On this leg down, we were thinking, okay, well, as long as we hold this demand zone, the buyers are okay. We're back to looking at that because this looks like further daily balance. And even if these sellers were to break through this area, which that's their objective right now, and fill the gap, well, still they would be okay if we can hold over this weekly no change level, 533.07. That's this weekly high over here, right? Because as long as that weekly high remains uh, supported, well, then obviously this move has not yet been negated. And there's a good amount of space for a weekly higher low over 518.36. Um, that's this low over here. Okay. So that's what we're looking out for uh, in the next week. I, I don't think we set up a trade zone that was that um, aggressive. Yeah. So I still like it down here. Ideally, you'll have at least hourly oversold conditions into this area. And basically, you're just looking for a week. This is essentially a play for a weekly higher low. Okay. So that's... That's really it for the SPY. Um, that's, yeah, that's really it for the SPY. All right, so for the Qs, so the Qs are very similar. We had a pop and drop situation, break to an all-time high. The Qs are looking a little bit better because they just set this daily higher low here and then broke to the higher high. Again, it's a red flag, right, that you pop and drop here. So what are we looking out for? We're looking out for further daily balance. How are we going to assess how strong the sellers are or how weak the buyers are? whatever. Um, we're just going to look at our references again, right? So the key demand zone from 6.5 to 6.10, that remains our uh, key uh, structure. As long as these buyers are holding over it, well, then they're not coming back down here. If they're not coming back down under here, then the weekly retracement will still be fine because that zone over here is this. The weekly higher low is at 443.06. So if they don't trade under uh, this guy, then they're not. Well, then we are going to set a higher low over 443.06, this low over here. So the sellers are now eyeing this gap from 471.29 down to 468.14. Filling that gap is their number one objective right now. And then beyond that, it would be to crack the 6.5 to 6.10 level. And I guess we should also mark up the weekly no change level. Um, we'll just mark that up right here. All right, so that's pretty much it. The, the buyers actually have space for a higher low to be set over 473.82. Um, now that you have seen a test of the range highs that didn't see follow through, you should expect the sellers to try to test the lows of the range, pretty much just like what happened with SPY, right? So you test the high of the range, you don't see follow through. So what do they try to do? They try to test the lows of the range. 
That's just how markets work. That's how balance works, right? It doesn't, doesn't even have to be just the markets. That's just how balance works, right? Like if you're on a seesaw, like a ball on a seesaw, right? And, you know, seesaw goes this way, ball rolls this way, but it doesn't go over. And then for whatever reason, the seesaw steps back, then, okay, goes that way. If it doesn't roll up, that's just balance, right? Or a water sloshing in a bucket. That's probably a better analogy because, you know, the seesaw would need some kind of force or whatever um but a bucket like swinging on a rope or whatever you'd have that water sloshing back and forth and as long as it doesn't tip over then you're just going to continue to balance if you someone were to add water into it right like let's say i don't know you have a water gun or something on one side or hose i guess i don't know why would water gun and then you start blasting it on one side okay that additional volume then can cause the uh, enough imbalance such that the, all the water can come tumbling out that's pretty much like what what it what it's like in fact um the analogy that um dan brought up forget when during a webinar or whatever about how like price is kind of flowing through these um you know uh uh peaks and valleys of volume uh i, I really like that analogy i use it all the time as well um so it's, it's cool that he looked at it the same way um anyway so that is really it right so i still like it like this again at least hourly oversold conditions because we're looking for a weekly higher low ideally we'll have daily oversold conditions but it's been a long time since that has occurred and you know the next time that that occurs because it was off of this move and we we, we were uh, uh expanded quite a bit from it again i think that would probably qualify as a back burner trade again okay and if you don't know what that is you can just um uh Type in, you know, search, go to our YouTube channel, search Backburner, and then uh, I, I believe there's instructional videos on there. If not, I might be thinking about one of our um, private videos, but if you're interested in that, links in the description below, uh, you know, check out our community and gain access to all of that um, educational content. So that's pretty much it for the cues. The Dow continues to balance, and I guess I shouldn't delete that error, right, because it's meaningful. So why were we talking about this? We were talking about this because this remains the key supply. Despite the fact that the buyers traded through it, they couldn't find acceptance above. And then it came back into play over here, right, with the uh, with the last week, the high of the last week being made pretty much right off of the value area low. So again, we were watching for this structure to be uh, reactive, which it absolutely was. Very clear POC rejection here. Again, increasing the probability that we see further balance like this. So I still like it down here, you know, and if we were to drill right right to this level from here, you would have daily oversold conditions, I, I believe at least. Yes, you would have daily oversold conditions if you were to drill all the way back down uh, to the lows of the range from here. And as long as we don't get back down under the 2022 high, well then that means we're not coming into here if we're not coming down into here, okay, well, then that breakout is not negated, right? So the bigger picture, buyers will still be very confident if they can maintain over this area, okay? Um, it's not going to be for a weekly higher low. It actually, it would be a weekly lower low. So it would actually be looking for a monthly higher low if we were to continue from here. Oh, I guess technically not. It was an instant. It's, it's a bit questionable, honestly, but I honestly don't care so much about that. What I care more about is do we break under here? Like price action trends, you know, they... they, they they can be misleading and everything can be misleading you know of course but horizontal levels i find to be they have the less potential to be misleading right because you know when you deal with price action trends sometimes people are a bit too predictive with it similar to patterns right patterns are you know they may have edge right but it's not like absolute and i feel i i know that many traders assign too much value to to uh, anything that's predictive essentially right you don't want to predict you want to react reacting is 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 you know is, is the way that you know that keeps you objective right because when you predict now you've filled full you've filled filled up your cup right with this idea and then once you fill up your cup with that idea you have all these biases that come into play particularly anchoring bias right once you have this idea you tend to anchor to it right that's like when, when you look at like um like that's why what they say for negotiations right don't 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 offer the first number or, or if you do offer a first number it should be really high because then that's where the the negotiations start from and then you kind of get anchored to that original everything beyond that is a reference to that original number okay so um yeah that's that's pretty much it right you don't want to fill your cup you want to stay open-minded to anything all all possibilities so um it's kind of like a paradox right because it's yeah only the empty cup can be full anyway um i guess you want to like fill it up drink it whatever analogy is falling apart uh, i still like it down here and um, that's a uh, really no change for the dow all right excuse me here it's something in my throat okay um so for the iwm um 
if you'll recall, we were looking at it like this, right? We have these two key structures, right? That's from these two over here, these two guys. This upper one made all these lows over here. This lower one made a bunch of highs over here, and they created this no man's land. We're back in the no man's land right now. If you recall, the uh, trade zone that I was um, suggesting, right, because it's, it was a more conservative trade zone, is down here, right? These, these uh, trade zones of old, this one that worked back here, it's kind of a recycled idea. That is the most conservative trade zone because, again, I only see you guys once a week. I'm not going to be super bold with call outs over here. But if you do want to, you know, see how you can kind of refine these trades, take this information, zoom into a lower time frame, and then, you know, apply it, you know, on again, on a lower time frame to gain more asymmetry on your trades, I strongly suggest you consider at least joining our community, right? We have tons of full-time traders. Obviously, the chart guys, chart gals are full-time traders is a bunch of other great traders uh, in our futures room, you know, some very, very uh, talented up-and-comers, I would say, uh, David, Tim, Rich, Storm, these guys are, you know, day in, day out, grinding away with me, uh, trading futures, but let me just walk you through the concepts, though, um, of uh, how, this is like the juicy part, I would say, the juiciest part of the video. Um, I'll walk you through how to get big asymmetry on your trades because as i've discussed in the past you know I, I i have talked about how an iwm is very interesting because all of these small caps they carry a lot of debt right these small companies carry a lot of debt and so right now with interest rates being very high it's expensive for them right that debt is expensive so if this market uh, rally is going to broaden out typically the small caps will see some love. And if the rates start coming down while the economy is still good, so there's still jobs or inflation is, is, is okay, um, then and then rates start coming down, what is that gonna mean for, for these small caps, right? For these companies that carry a lot of debt, they will be able to borrow money and their current you know, uh, loans right now can become cheaper, right? They can refinance or whatever, or they can just borrow more money for cheaper rates, whatever. So they should benefit, the small caps should benefit. That being said, it's been very tricky to grab a position in the uh, uh, IWM via the futures contracts. The futures uh, is RTY. It's been tricky because this has it's been very choppy back and forth. I've made many attempts, profitable attempts, but I get stopped out, right? Because eventually we come back down or we don't hold the higher low or whatever. Excuse me. <clears throat> excuse me. Um, so it's been tricky. And so I realized, okay, you know what? Why don't I just roll proceeds from RTY gains from day trading or trading the lower time frames into IWM shares? And then if the rally does broaden out whenever, great. And if not, whatever, you know, I kind of paid for it with the, you know, short term trading. And so you'll recall that um, from last week, I was discussing, all right, well, we should expect the sellers to be trying to come down here. Um, and that would be fine. That would be normal. It would just be balancing. But if the buyers were to stop price over here, that would be notable because that would be preventing sellers from coming down here. And we are also looking for the potential of a weekly higher low being set, which now is set. So the plays that I made last week are essentially um, plays for that. There are plays in here as well, but I didn't, um, I just didn't organize them well or whatever. So, uh, this week, though, I, I, I do I did organize it pretty well. So let me just walk you through some of these trades. So I made plays on June 24th, uh, 25th, I think, and 26th. So I made plays June 24th, 25th, 26th. Why? Because on the 24th, right, I'm looking essentially for a continuation play. I did make a play. I forget which day. I think on this day. Either way, um, I made a play here because we just set the higher low. We held this point of control of this local demand zone. And like I said, if because we're looking for that potential weekly higher low. And if that weekly higher low is set over here and we don't come down here, that's obviously a really good look. Don't forget that the no man's land is this guy. This big guy over here, point of control made for this high, made for this high, made for this high. It's also right here, this big POC. So this structure is pretty much a proxy for that big point of control. If this guy is going to start flipping into demand, then we should expect price action to be the opposite of this, which is kind of what tried to happen here, what tried to happen here, right? And was just what's trying to happen right now. So, um, okay, so without further ado, then I'll just pop on over to this guy and I'll show you the alerts or uh, the messages. Again, this is what we share to the community in our futures room. Uh, and again, I'm, I'm there pretty much every day talking through these trade ideas. And so, well, actually here, I should switch over to this RTY chart now. And I'll show you June 24th. Okay, so on June 24th, 
I say, all right, at 9.35 a.m., I bought the RTY pass back over the open. Right, so that's over here. Here is the open. All right, and so the open, you get a big push up, right? And then you don't see follow through. And that's on this day, June 24th here. You get a big push up initially, and then you don't see follow through. And then you, you see some retracement, but notice where this retracement goes, right? This retracement doesn't even get back down to the value area high. And that is on this day. We're looking at this day right now, right? So despite the fact that you do retrace after the open, you're still pretty much entirely over the prior day. It's a gap up, right? So this is a pretty much a textbook um, gap up play. You go with the, the buyers if they the sellers uh, have an incomplete gap fill or they can't find acceptance back under the prior day's session, right? And so, I'm sorry, the high of the prior day's uh, session or just prior session, whatever. And so um, that's uh, that's pretty much it. And so I walk you guys through, I walk the uh, gang through it, right? So the, everything is always described. We call out all, well, we don't all, but most of the um, chart guys team will very, very regularly be calling out these trades. Uh, I'm, I'm doing it all the time. So 9.35, we buy the pass back over RTY. I'm in the open for the RTY. I tell you what the stop is. I tell you where I'm looking for that chop. I say I'm looking for the chop under the diva. That's the developing value area high. That's right here. So you buy that. Your stop's under there. You chop it there. And then we look for more out under the ONH. It's not marked up right now, but... I just want to show you that you know it's all live call right so at 9 36 i'm looking for more out at the onh at 9 39 i say okay that's it i got that onh exit and then i just walk to stop for the root excuse me something is bothering me in my throat i thought i had it clear before the recording but it's not okay and then for the rest i just look to walk up the stop for the rest and then i'll roll my proceeds before the end of the day which is what i do at the end of the day we're hanging out somewhere i think there's a bounce at the end of the day I rolled it. Oh, I guess I should have probably sent the, I didn't copy that last message, but somewhere over here, I rolled the proceeds um, for the runner. But even if we stopped it out, no problem. We would still have proceeds to buy IWM shares, even if that last leg was, was stopped out. So that's fine. Uh, overnight, we get stopped out of the remaining, uh, 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 or rather, uh, the, the buyers don't see follow through. And then the next day on June 25th, again, you know, I'll walk you guys through this once again. Why? Okay, so on June 25th, on uh, at 10.02, I buy the uh, inside bar break, the RTY IV break, right? Why do I do that here? On June 25th, what's happening on June 25th? And this is, you know, again, pretty important, right? We're looking for a potential daily higher low after coming off of here. So actually, this one is a little bit outside of the guidelines that I set for myself for this quarter because there wasn't really that much extension. I do mention that in the thread because I want to hold myself accountable. Um, I didn't copy that message. I don't think I didn't copy that message, but I promise you it's there. There's a whole room full of people I trade with every day that that that, that will that can vouch for me. They're probably watching this video right now. You can check my work too if you want, but you'll have to uh, sign up. So uh, uh, links in the description below. Anyway, so uh, let's go back to that uh, walk through here. So the 1002, we're over here, right? And here's the in, uh, inside bar. I buy this inside bar break. Let's copy it again over here. I buy that IB break. It's a play off the POC from the 23rd. Okay, so the idea is it's over here. Um, the POC of the 23rd is over here. So here is the, uh, wait, hold on a second. Oh, I, I, that was a typo. It should have said 21st. It's, it's, yeah, 21st. Where's 23rd? 23rd is not even a, <laughs> not even a, a, a day that, that, that there's trade. So I must have just seen 24th and then just minus one. So it's a play off this guy, right? And so why am I, why do I care about this? First of all, it's two sessions points of control. And so if these buyers are going to set this daily higher low on this day, on this day, right, then they need to hold over these sessions, right? And so we walk through that trade as well. Uh, oops. Buy the IB break. Going to aim for the playoff of 23rd. Going to aim for the regular trading hours low. The regular trading hours low was here. Okay. So we just aim for that. Chop it up. Here, let me, let me, let me base this. Chop it up. Out more under the regular trading hours low. And then again, I do the same thing. Walk the stop up. And I think eventually we get stopped out on this day. But no problem. We still have a little bit of gains, right? Which we can then roll into IWM shares. Because we're trying to have a position that doesn't need a hard stop. That's the idea, right? Well, that's my goal, at least. So again, like 
you know, not only will we walk you through the trades, but we're also talking about strategy, right? Like using different instruments for different reasons, right? So the RTY, the futures contract, because we're taking these asymmetrical trades with a leveraged product, we can accumulate a lot of gains and then we can roll those uh, gains into shares. And then we don't really care what happens to those shares. We don't need a stop loss for them because they're also all just house money. You know, it's kind of like, um, like selling credit, right? And an IRA, like different uh, tools, different instruments, different accounts, right? whatever, like options, futures, shares, uh, or a retirement account, right? They have different qualities that then, you know, kind of lend themselves to specific strategies. So for example, in the IRAs, retirement accounts, tax-free accounts, whatever you want to call it in your country, um, selling credit is a really good strategy. You, you see what I'm saying? And so, you know, you just, when, you, when you start trading different instruments, right, on different timeframes, you start to realize that the certain tactics or strategies fit better with certain instruments and certain accounts. So if you're interested in learning, you know, all of this nuance of trading, right, you know, give us a shot, right? Check out, check it out. Um, okay, so then that was pretty much it. Uh, we walk up the stop and then we get stopped out uh, after we get two exits. So as soon as you get that second exit, the trade is profitable. The first exit is usually just me getting my risk out of the equation. And then the second one is almost always a decent amount of profit. And then the third one is like the runner. And then finally on the 26th, on the 26th, all right, so I say before the open, I'm open to playing RTY or the yes, if extension into the daily levels. And then I say I'm in, oh, I could have, there should have been an earlier exit, an earlier one where I was like eyeing an SS or whatever. But either way, at 9.33, I'm say, I say I'm in. 9.33 is right on this candle. I just bought the stair step break. So just buying this new, uh, this new high, you just buy that. Stop is under the low. And again, the exits are all described. I'm eyeing an exit under the O&L. Looking for the diva out more under the prior regular trading hours low. I, I didn't do a good job copying these, but again, it's it's all it's all in the thread. Hold on a second here. Um, let's see. Can't click through this. Okay, in eyeing an exit under the overnight low. Looking for the diva, I chopped it off, and then I say, okay, listen, I'm. It's a play for this, right? And this is really key here. This is super, super key. It's a play off of this, right? Remember, I'm trying to show you how you can use these, uh, the information from these you know, free videos to make some incredibly asymmetrical trades, right? So these, they didn't stick, but they were profitable. On this day, we freaking nailed that bottom, right? And again, if you're trading RTY, right? Think about this move here on RTY, right? Uh, well, here, let's think about this move on RTY, all right? The, the risk on this trade was this. One point is 50 bucks in RTY, okay? The risk on this trade was 2.5 points, or not even, right? I mean, that's with wiggle room. The move, because it was off of a daily level and had daily implications, the move off of that low has made for over, like, I'm, I don't even, you know, I don't, let's see. 56, right? So the R multiple on this is 22R, and this is a leverage product. Okay, so it's huge R, right? So this is how we do it. This is how we do it day in and day out. We wait for a key daily level to be tested, right? We look for a lower time frame uh, setup that gives us a lot of asymmetry because even if the trade works on the day, which it does, right? Like my one of the exits on that day was the regular trading hours low, right? That is here, okay? That's a four hour trade, nearly a four hour trade. I mean, it probably was four hour. I don't usually give it, I, I, actually that is about right wiggle room. So a nearly four hour trade just for the session. Okay. And then that, that one was like a 20 hour trade. So there's that, that there's just so much asymmetry when you trade in this fashion. So, you know, if you're an independent operator, you probably already know like, you know, what I'm describing. And so hopefully these levels help you. Okay. So yeah, I'm sorry if that tangent was really long. But I do think that like, I think that's arguably the, like one of the best ways, if not the best ways to trade. So there's a secret sauce. It's obviously harder to do, right? Like that, you know, like it's, it's, we've, we've done this, I've done this for years now, right? So it's, it's, you know, become a second nature. It's going to take time. Don't like put pressure on yourself to nail it the, immediately. Um, but again, if you want a community to help you, you know, learn how to do that, check us out. Okay. So, um, that is. 
pretty much well not really so for iwm we're still worried about this big old supply here these buyers are trying to make their way over this guy the more acceptance that they can find over 202.02 the more likely then that this weekly higher low has been set and that we'll see follow through into uh higher highs right so that's pretty much it right we're still just watching the same old thing these two bands are the key whoa that plane is super close it's weird um i know recently they changed like uh light pads and my community is really upset <laughs> like i have a 90 year old neighbor she's on like every single community board like the lions club or whatever rotary club and all these things she's super upset <laughs> anyway um <clears throat> um yeah so that's really it for the for the rut we're just still watching these guys i don't i still don't hate it down here like if you're a more conservative operator playing down here it's still fine all right all right so moving on to the dollar here the dollar we are where where, where oh i'm on the wrong chart here Okay, so the dollar just kind of grinding their way back up here. We really don't want to see acceptance back over 106.335 asset buyers. I mean, don't really want to see acceptance on, uh, over this structure because it's it's pretty much contained price. The fact that the dollar has just kind of traded sideways in a fairly tight range for so long has been honestly good, right? For the markets, you don't really want a strong dollar. Strong dollar makes our exports more expensive. It, you know, it, it makes it so that we, we don't sell as many goods and it could, it has the potential to, to slow the economy. That's, kind of, that's why China pegs their, what you want, you know, like with their, with all their reserve currency, with all their American reserve currency, so they can keep their costs of, you know, exports down, labor and exports down. Obviously those two things are tied together. Anyway, um, that's really it. So we're eyeing 106.335. As long as there's not acceptance over 106.335, then pretty much the status quo. We're just still watching this demand zone, this supply zone, and we're just balancing in between. All right. Moving on to the VIX. VIX is still super low, not really doing much of anything. I'm starting to think that like selling puts might be a reasonable strategy, right? Like I'd have to look into it more, but like selling these out of the money puts, either way. There's not really any red flags, right? Even the selling on Friday didn't really create any structural damage. And, you know, like we keep checking in uh, regularly, the fear and greed index is still like, let's see, it's, it's actually come back down to fear because of Friday selling. Uh, it, it like very briefly broke into the neutral territory. Um, but, you know, obviously that's not the case anymore. Hang on a second here. Let me just uh, find where I, I kept the link. And I think this is, you know, something to um, worth uh checking out right you just you, you can just google this right and this is the uh, uh the money market funds right how much money is sitting in the sidelines because rates have been so high for so long there's a lot of money just sitting in the sidelines right because they they were just okay with that amount of yield five percent or whatever um yield and so you have trillions of dollars sitting in the sidelines right now and even i have a lot of cash that i'm willing to deploy that i have been deploying every time like there's some major downturns like the tqqq play for the monthly higher low these rty plays or whatever i'm using the you know what am i buying iwm shares with i'm using you know money that was in money market funds so that's probably happening to a lot of folks they're looking to deploy cash and so if you still have cash on the sidelines the fear and greed index is like still bordering fear there's not a lot of fear out there right now. So we'll just continue to monitor the VIX. If the market continues to rally and the VIX also goes up, that'll be a bit of a red flag. But as of right now, there's just no red flags. The VIX is not telling us um, that there's any fear at all. All right, so moving into some of these uh, hype sectors here. So for NVDA, this is kind of a red flag, right? To get stalled over here is not great. So I gave you guys this trade zone last week. Um, I think there was, it probably got hourly oversold into it. I imagine all right so remember the two ingredients that we that we want to uh, for every single trade right is extension and location right we want to make sure that both of these things are met and so we have extension hourly oversold into this location this demand zone and so the initiations if you're using this trade zone you know they're most best used over here right once we're at the value area high because we're not yet oversold you don't want to start you know playing yet so ideally you, you took your plays in here and chopped it up here and I would actually just throw my stop under the low because if we were to lower low from here, that would be again a bit of a red flag because we're getting we're getting caught up here. So essentially, this structure right now is acting as supply because you can see how the buyers are having a hard time finding acceptance 
over the high of the range, okay? And so if we do happen to lower low next week, we're probably gonna come down and test this guy. That's why this large, this trade zone is this big range. I don't mean for you to scale in blindly. Again, I mean for you to start looking for those plays um, excuse me, when there's extension. Excuse me. Um, all right, so yeah, so this is pretty much a play for a potential weekly higher low. Weekly retracement is uh, underway. Anything over 75.61 is going to be good for a weekly higher low. We can label this as the weekly no change level. As long as these buyers are holding over this guy, then the breakout is not yet negated. Um, but this is already looking different from here. Remember, we compared this session or this current price section to what happened here last time. It's already looking worse than that, right? Because on this move down, you'll notice they don't get back down to the prior demand zone. On this move down, they did get down to the prior demand zone. Additionally, on this initial bounce, you retrace like, like the golden pocket, pretty much. Yep, you retrace to the pretty much the golden pocket on this initial move. Whereas over here, that's probably like a 3A2, if that. Like, yeah, we're getting stalled right now at the 3A2. So this now, all of this following price action was much better than this current price action. So a bit of a red flag, but again, as long as we're holding over 97.40, the weekly time frame is fine. The bigger picture is fine. So I would not be surprised to see more balance just over 97.40 and under the all-time high right now. And again, what you're, what you're going to be looking for if you want trades is just into these areas, these locations where there's been volume, but also with the extension. Okay. So if you did chop this, I mean, if you did buy in here, you did chop it up. And if you are going to stop it out down here, you can move this a little bit lower now just to make sure that uh, the, the, uh, hourly would be extended, right? So we'll probably be like down here now. Something like that would make a little bit more sense, right? If you have no position, this is your first time here. And we want to be something like that now, just a little bit more conservative. Okay, and if you did this from last time, then chop it up, stop it out, and then we'll look to reload again when, these, when those conditions are met. All right, extension into location. Um... And my favorite analogy for that is like a fighter, right? So like if you, if somebody, you know, you're fighting somebody, right? And they throw a big overhand right or something and they miss, they're very extended. They have exposed themselves, right? Because they've missed, they have exposed themselves to you. Their entire side is exposed, right? Um, but you're, you don't have location, right? Let's say you didn't slip properly. Instead of slipping to the side and forward, you just slip to the side. So now you don't have as many available shots to you. Right. Whereas if you slip to the side and forward, now you're pretty much right there. You can do whatever you want. You can do all your close strikes. And if you want to throw a long strike, you can push them back. You see what I'm saying? Right. When you slip to the side, right. And you just go to the side, you, you, you only have your like medium strikes available to you. But if you slip to the side and forward, right, you, you have all your shots available to you, right? Your, your close shots, your medium shots. And again, if you want your, your range shots, you push them because they're already extended, right? You just extend it, so you push them, now they're off balance, and then you throw like a head kick or whatever, right? Your, your range is shot. If, if that's, you know, if that's your thing. If not, you know, if you're a traditional boxer, then you're, you're probably going to unload on like the body, right? You're, you'll dig into the body and then go go high right so anyway that's my favorite analogy but if you don't have location right and your opponent is extended but you're not properly located maybe you didn't slip at all maybe you move backwards now your opponent is extended but you don't have the location you're not in the proper location to capitalize okay so the best trades will always have or the best trades when in, in a manner in which we like to do it right we like to buy weakness we like to sell um strength appropriately not not just blindly uh, these two parameters need to be met Okay, excuse me. Um, okay, so moving on to Bitcoin. <clears throat> um, Bitcoin, still just grinding this major point of control here. Um, you know, as long as this move is not yet negated, I think bigger picture, these, these buyers are doing fine. This is still potentially a monthly bull flag and you know you can't love the fact that we've been trading sideways for so long but the fact of the matter is we're trading sideways over this 2021 structure for the most part there's much more acceptance over that point of control than there is under it and again as long as this structure is still supportive of price then no big deal this little four hour structure is what stalled price last time so i've got an alert set for that if we pop if we drill under here and then don't see follow through and then move back above I'm, I'll, I'll be interested in playing Bitcoin, although to be completely honest with you, I'm kind of shifting my focus more to um, Ethereum because they have the ETF uh, news, right? They have a little bit of, um, you know, um, 
like tailwind. Okay. So anyway, um, that's pretty much it. I think I caught the thing up. Okay, so daily lower high has been set. <clears throat> Anything under 62470 is going to be good for one. And that is another daily lower high, I mean. And that's really it for Bitcoin. Okay, so for Ethereum, again, this is kind of what I'm more interested in. I would prefer another leg down, to be completely honest with you. Like a, a nice leg down to get the daily oversold, which I think hasn't happened in quite some time. Yeah, it has. So I have an alert set for it, and I would rather, you know, you, you tell me where the location is going to be, right? Like, what, where do I want the location to be? Obviously, I want it down here, right? In this local demand zone. And then, of course, backtesting this big guy. So daily oversold conditions into this area. That's what I'm most interested in for Ethereum. Okay. Something like this. Makes a whole lot of sense. Just that initially. Obviously, that's our initial target. And then we'll look for more exits here. And then uh, ideally, we'll look for more one more over here. And then we'll walk the stop for the rest assuming the trade works. <laughs> um, so that is uh, pretty much it. So yeah, we're looking for a weekly higher low, anything over um, two, well, I don't care about that one as much. 2814.12 will be good for a weekly higher low. We're just in this weekly EQ here. And the best case scenario for these buyers would be to hold over this local demand zone. All right. And remember, we're watching these three structures, right? This guy made for this major low, and then it's kind of being problematic over here. And this middle guy over here, is what's stopping the buyer so far from getting to the really key test, the all-time high structure. All right. Okay, so GME, I'm still just waiting for this, you know, like honestly, the buyers are looking pretty good, right? They're playing solid defenses, is, is what I should say. So uh, one way of looking at this, right, is okay, so that's that tweet reaction. This gap is that tweet reaction. And then this was the uh, uh, potential uh negation of that. The sellers tried to negate that change right that that occurred they didn't do a good job of that right they don't come back down into this demand zone then they pop back up and now if you'll notice you know what's happening is it's pretty much a battle for the high of, i mean the uh low of the gap well i guess the high of the gap right where you're continuing to see lower lows uh through it not really see that much follow through so you know we could definitely mark this up i'm you know I'm, it's like a local structure and it's probably right off of the value very high So you can see how this local demand is what's containing price so far, supporting price, I should say. So honestly, this looks really good. That being said, this supply right here is also rejecting price. So it's really anybody's guess, but again, I still like it down here because things would get extended again. And also this structure is pretty much at the highs of all of this lower stuff, right? All of this lower stuff down here is that band over here. And we've just been kind of trading sideways um, under this hourly structure and over again, that guy over there. So, <clears throat> oh, did I, did I, did I not show it? Uh, this guy. Sometimes the picture blocks it. I got a message about that. Thank you, Loey. I appreciate it. Um, I guess I should have switched it over. I'll try to remember next time to, to move my face. Um, there next time. Wait, that over there next time. Um, anyway, so that is. Pretty much it. I don't, I don't really, I'm not so interested in playing this, right? Like, even if it does bull break from here, I, I don't care. Like, I'm fine with missing it. I would only want it here with extension. That's, that's, the, that's a heavy alert set for it as well. Um, so that's pretty much it. And this is pretty much just a big old EQ, you know? So there's no reason why we can't come back down and test these lows. I know that there's like, you know, uh, people think there's a floor or whatever. That might very well be the case, but that's not how I, I do things. So I just want it exactly how I want it. Like Burger King. I don't actually like Burger King, but I want it my way. <clears throat> I like their commercials. Those weird commercials with the with the with the king, like doing weird things, being being like awkward or whatever. I like that. <laughs> I haven't seen them in years. I don't know if they still do those, but um anyway. <laughs> CCJ, really no change to CCJ either. Uh, I still think this is a pretty reasonable trade zone, although, you know, we could be a little bit more conservative with it because we've cooled off the RSI on the daily time frame now. So I think if we were to come down there, you probably wouldn't be flirting with daily oversold anymore. So maybe just moving it a little bit lower or something like that, I think would be okay. Right. And we're just really looking at this as more balance, right? We're looking at this as balance under this guy, under this structure, right? which is just at the top of this big structure. So the big value area that we have is just this big guy, this huge balance here. And then this lower band is just what the, the structure is sitting at its highs. 
So that's pretty much what price has been doing, right? It's battling for it. That it popped and dropped over the all-time high resistance. And thus far, we've been holding over the POC of the big guy. So this is essentially just a play looking for the potential for this local demand zone and the big guy's value area high to hold price. At this point now, we might as well just, you know, move it down to like that, right? And then look for a potential break or no fall, something like that. I think it's very reasonable. Again, daily oversold conditions into this trade zone where the demand is, where the value area high is. I think very reasonable. Oh, another 40 minute video. Apologies for the, for the link. Um, okay, so, or you're welcome for the value, I guess. Depends on how you look at it. If you're upset, sorry. If you like it, you're welcome. <laughs> um, okay, so anyway, what are we going to do about TAN? So, like I said, we're waiting for, again, daily oversold conditions, right? We want, with this trade zone is still reasonable, but again, we don't want to start doing anything until we get that extension. So we could actually lower this a little bit as well, be a bit more conservative. But, you know, I, maybe I might just start stop covering this on it. It's not really seeing any hype, you know what I mean? Um, so, yeah, like if we don't get back over here, then you don't negate this breakdown. And so the buyers really haven't proved much. And even they're they're playing really good defense off of this big structure over here. They're not going on the offense by finding acceptance over this guy. In fact, they keep getting stalled over here. So it doesn't look great, but I still think this is a very reasonable trade zone. It's already worked a few times for us. I, w I would be fine with lowering this now, right? Because obviously we're not extended right now. So, you know, something like this. Something like this, I think, is, is a bit more reasonable, right? And you're looking for a break of this major point of control that doesn't see follow through. You probably don't want to be so loose all the way down to there. Um, so something like that. I think it's pretty reasonable. Well, hide this one for now. Something like this. You know, uh, it like covers this trend line as well from way back when. Um, and, and, and if this holds here, they should be trying to get here. All right. So I don't love this. You know, I'm not actively trading this space, but, you know, for a while it was looking like it was, you know, getting some attention. And now, not so much. Um, and then finally, MSOs. So MSOs dipped into that trade zone that I shared with you. You know, obviously didn't get too deep into it, but I do think there was extension, right? Yeah, see what I'm talking about, right? Extension into the location. That's when we want to be looking for those plays. There's probably hourly extension as well, because that looks like three days of selling. There sure was, okay? So that's why we want to wait for that extension before we do anything. And we're always waiting at location. It's like hanging out in a fort. You know, that's your location, that's where you want to defend. And ideally, your opponent is extended by the time that they get to you. So hopefully they were, you know, being forced to march over many miles. They're tired, their supply chain is stretched out. Um, maybe they're thinking about revolting because their leadership just made them force march <laughs> for so long. Anyway, so dipped in the trade zone and got to the target. You know, I'm not too surprised that the buyers have problems here because it's this major prior low. So this change is not yet negated unless they can get back over here. We, 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 you know, I gave you that target a little bit under that low for this exact reason, right? Because the, the asset is not very strong right now. We always know where they're trying to get to, but we don't have, we can't have as much confidence knowing that if they'll get there. And if an asset is, has not really shown you a lot of strength in a long time, you don't really want to aim for for their for them achieving their goal, right? The buyers have not been strong for a long time. And so we don't want to assume that they will achieve this goal. We know that they will try to get to the goal. And so we should look for those exits under the goal because the odds of them failing to get there are pretty good, despite the fact that we know where they're trying to get to. We know these buyers are trying to get here. We know that because they're trying to break into all-time highs. And in order for them to break into all-time highs, they have to, to absorb all this supply that was left behind from sellers, okay? You want to get high you need supply <laughs> okay sorry <laughs> um, um or you need to get through supply gotta buy supply Whatever. um <clears throat> anyway so it doesn't look good you know <laughs> like i said i was thinking about not covering anymore because it, it just doesn't look good um but yeah that one worked out for now and now that the rsi has cooled off again again same thing as those other names, right? We just want to be move adjust this ever so slightly. We'll move it down a little bit to like here-ish. <laughs> the uh, the brunch spot uh, around my block is starting with their their ridiculous DJing. It's ridiculous. It's it's so weird. Like it's a brunch spot, and they have a DJ that blasts like EDM tribal music. It's it's so wild. But I can already hear. He's <laughs> probably like warming up or something. Anyway, um. <clears throat> 
that is pretty much it for MSOs. You know, I would just, again, this is the location, daily oversold, hourly oversold. That's the only way that I like it. And if they start drilling and, and, and make break to new lows, I'm probably going to stop covering this guy. So, well, you, let me know in the comments, you know, if you insist, right, if you really, really like MSOs or whatever, even if it's blacker breakdown and stuff, okay, I'll think about it. But otherwise, that's it. I appreciate you guys tuning in. Thanks for sharing some of your time and uh, energy with me. I, I hope to, I hope you enjoy the, your week. I hope to see you soon. And oh, right, the, um, oh, shoot, hold on a second here. Uh, if you are interested in checking our community, links in the description below. And we will have to be doing the public giveaway free courses from June 24th, June 24th to July 1st. Um, yeah, that's, I'll, I'll put the link in the description below. And then also, uh, Dan is going to be doing, uh, Dan is going to be doing a live stream on July 2nd at 5 p.m. Uh, regarding his secret tool for trading success. So uh, those links will be in the description below. If you're interested, check those out. Otherwise, again, I appreciate your time and energy, and I hope to see you guys next week. Farewell.